Formula One car is like an upside-down aeroplane. Air travelling at speed over the wings and under the floor creates a low-pressure area, having the effect of forcing the car down onto the track. This creates enormous grip, allowing the car to corner and brake with five times more force than the fastest road car. Generating aerodynamic downforce also creates turbulent drag, though, which slows the cars down and must be minimised by the designers. around a racetrack is to reduce the angle of every corner by using the full width of the track. Break and downshift in a straight line and turn in from the edge of the track. Then kiss the kerb with the inside wheels at a peak point. This point is called the apex. Turning has finished now so the driver can progressively move to the outside of the track once more for best acceleration and to prepare for the next corner. Formula One cars have a minimum weight limit of 605 kilos, including the driver. Driver weights vary by up to 20 kilos, and the cars themselves by even more, depending on the design. Most car and driver combinations are still potentially underweight, needing ballast to reach the minimum limit. Tungsten steel is firmly fixed in the underfloor and the front wing to both help tune the car's handling and keep the centre of gravity low. G-force stands for gravitational force. The fastest road cars generate 1G when cornering and braking. Because of aerodynamic downforce and wide slick tyres, F1 cars generate 5G, or five times the force of gravity. This puts tremendous strain on both mechanical parts and the driver, especially his neck when controlling his head and crash helmet into a corner or braking zone. Unless it rains, every driver must use two compounds of dry rubber tyre in a Grand Prix. The softer rubber mixtures tend to initially grain when driven hard. The tread of the tyre rips as it slides across the track, forming balls of rubber on the surface. Resulting braking, turning and wheel spin problems mean that it's easy to lose up to two seconds per lap. Usually the graining stabilises and then fades away after five or so laps as the tyres wear down. Aerodynamic and mechanical balance is the holy grail of setting up a Formula One car for best performance. On the limit, a race car will always be sliding to an extent. Balance means that the front and rear of the car slides in unison in a predictable and consistent way. Oversteer is when the back wheels slide more when cornering. As the back of the car steps out, it points to the inside of the corner. It has oversteered. Engineers from selected teams and the FIA formed the Overtaking Working Group. After much wind tunnel research, they created a new design to increase overtaking opportunities. OK, Nelson, you've got Hamilton behind you now. You need to keep pushing. The bodywork has become much smoother with less aerodynamic add-ons. This reduces the turbulent air pouring from the back of the car. Lower and wider front wings are also less affected by the dirty air and help the drivers follow more closely. It's very narrow in the pedal area of the cockpit of a Formula One car. There's only room for a throttle and a brake pedal. The clutch moves up onto the steering wheel with these paddles. The drivers are just moving little potentiometers. They're not directly connected to the clutch at all. Often they'll release 1 to 50% on the start line, and the final launch will come from the second clutch paddle. The clutch is only used on the start and in the pit lane. More paddles on this wheel. It belongs to Fernando Alonso from Renault. This is the gear shift paddle, upshift and down. Some drivers like a rocker, so they can push it either way. Then two further paddles.
some drivers might use this to engage the Kerr's power. Alonso uses his. Instead of adjusting these switches on the front of the wheel, so having to look down and take his hand off the wheel, they can set these up to adjust, say, engine or differential parameters. So it's busy on the front and equally busy on the rear. The ground clearance of an F1 car is critical for aerodynamic performance. The lower, the better, which generates more downforce and reduces the centre of gravity of the car's weight. There's a skid block underneath, usually referred to as the plank, which cannot be worn away, otherwise the driver will be disqualified. This stops the teams constantly trashing the expensive carbon fibre floors while looking for extra speed. Because of the bumps, drains, curbs and pavements of the Monaco track, teams are forced to increase the suspension travel and raise the front and rear ride heights. This stops the car hitting the track. Three days before every Grand Prix, each car must pass scrutineering checks for both safety and eligibility. Think of it as a posh MOT. Dimensions and weights are thoroughly checked and loads are applied to aerodynamic parts to make sure they don't flex too much. Here they are checking the minimum ground clearance, the front wing height, the rear wing overall size and the total width of the car. Official seals are applied to the engine and gearbox and only then is the car cleared to race. Formula One regulations restrict each driver to 14 sets of dry weather tyres, that's seven each of two different rubber compounds, plus four sets of intermediate condition tyres, and finally, three sets of wet tyres for use in heavy rain. That's 84 tyres in total. They're fitted to small 13-inch diameter wheel rims, so they are very high profile, unlike today's road tyres. The grooves in any tyre are there only to clear water, so the full rubber surface of the slick dry tyre is very grippy. As the drivers approach any corner, they need the front of the car to give a predictable and consistent amount of turn. Then they can place the car precisely for the optimum line. If the front tyres slide across the tarmac surface and away from the corner, and the car doesn't turn enough, this is called understeer. When the driver applies power through to the end of a corner and the front slides wide, it's called power understeer. Understeer makes the car relatively easy to drive, but it's slow and also damages the front tyres. 